thousand mantras of my protector every single day and also I would uh, make offerings of black tea 108 times a day and I would do my protector sadhana along with my other sadhanas and I would do my protector long puja once a month by myself in my room and I had very little offerings just peanuts and Indian you know, cakes very small small things but I generated as big and offered up and the jewelry that I offer now like you see all this real stuff on um, that time I just buy plastic jewelry from Hubli the nearby city and visualize it as real diamonds and real pearls and real emeralds and offer it up to a protector and tell him, please get me sponsors in the future that I can do down the road. And I used to do that because that's all I can afford. Anyways, um, some of us are financially very strapped or financially very tight or live month to month, but we still do the Dharma. For these type of people, I commend them because, let me tell you why, I don't plan or I don't recommend you to plan your secular life beyond five, ten years. And to always plan your secular life long term, long term, long term, you might be disappointed in the end. Because you don't know what's going to happen to you. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when you're, the person you're planning with is going to die. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if your business will crash or you'll, you'll lose your job. You don't know what's going to happen. So my point is what is, it's more important now for us to plan our Dharma life, our Dharma future. No matter, and if you're, you think, oh, I'm young, I want to experience things, trust me. When you look back, you're going to think you didn't miss much at all. You didn't miss anything. Spread Dharma to others becomes stronger. Two things happen. One is, you will see that although you're saying the same thing, more people are becoming convinced as their merit backing you up. The second thing is this power, this karma that you've collected to spread teachings to others will push you to, to closer to people who will meet the Dharma. So the outlets may move to places that will be more suitable. And that those group of people's time is correct for us to be. Does everybody understand? Everybody understand? Yeah. Older, they get very powerful in their speech. And their speech moves and their speech is very, very incredibly moving. People say, well that's experience and that's maturity. I don't agree. Because there are teachers that age, 20 years later they speak, people still don't listen to them. I saw with my own eyes. And it's not one or two. So there are teachers or people who try to be teachers when they speak, people still do not listen. Still do not. Why? When they talk, the motivation was different. So it doesn't create karma. So the outlet is a platform for you to speak and to do and to enact. The outlet is a powerful platform. Personally speaking, how many friends do you have? Personally speaking, if it's not for the Dharma, personally I don't have any friends, if maybe one or two. I don't have any friends if it wasn't for the Dharma. Because the Dharma I have many friends. So I use Dharma as a platform to bring Dharma. So when we talk to a person and they don't agree, should we feel disappointed, James? If why shouldn't we feel disappointed, James? Why? Because the effort that we put in, the motivation that comes from the people will help us to create a merit so in the future we will move to a bigger place and also we will make a person that we should actually really want to do. What's the purpose of moving to another place if we move at all? If we move to another place and meet different kind of people, that the, the, the location and the different karma that people come from. Yes. What would cause us to move? By our motivation, the speech that we talk, how we nurture the people. How we nurture the, the customer or our staff so that we move to them. That will create the causes for us to actually move. Move to where? A place that we can be even more effective. So that's very, very important. That is why whatever we do Dharma work, we have to understand the cause and effects of karma. When we understand the cause and effects of karma, we do it, we do it blissfully, 
and joyfully and energetically. Why? Because we know there's a higher purpose than what we see in front of us. Okay?